there, I'm Jeanette Lane, and in today's video, I'm showing you how to make a quick shaker card with the Tonic Studios Card Making Collection Kit number eight. Now this kit is jam packed. It's got a die set, a stamp set, an embossing folder, papers and toppers, as well as an ideas magazine. And I'm really loving how quick and easy the shaker card came together, as you will see shortly. So let's get started. To start off our card, I have a piece of cardstock that I have trimmed, scored, and folded, and this measures uh, five inches by five inches, so a five inch square. And then I'm gonna take the die set included in the kit, which is an awesome die set. Oh my gosh, I've never seen anything like this. It's so intricate, but there's different ways that you can use it to really, like it's just such a versatile die. So what I'm gonna do is take this inner circle here, and that's going to make uh, the main, uh, just the aperture for our shaker card. And then I'm going to run this through the die cutting machine. But of course, I want to keep my cardstock open <laughs> so that uh, I'm not cutting through both sides. So I'm going to run this through my Jane Davenport Spellbinders die cutting machine, which is really beautiful. It's a gorgeous teal color. And I'm gonna secure my die to my cardstock with a little washi tape, but I wanna make sure that it's not too tacky because you don't want to accidentally tear your cardstock. So what I'm doing is just removing some of the tack on my cardigan. So then I can put that down and my uh, washi tape won't stick to my cardstock. So here is the aperture for my shaker card. That's what it looks like. And what I want to do next is put some uh, acetate on the back. So I have a piece of acetate somewhere on my desk. It's clear so you can't see it. There it is. It was hidden. So there's my piece of acetate and I'm going to put this right behind that aperture and secure it with some adhesive. Now besides acetate, you could also use some tool material to um, secure your sequins so that they're not falling through. So that's an option. So, okay, so what I'm gonna do now is just glue this down. I'm gonna put a little bit of li liquid adhesive around my aperture here. Easy breezy, nothing too tidy, because we're gonna cover up this uh, backing here, so you don't have to be too precise at this point. Now that my acetate is secure, I'm going to open this up and I'm going to line the circle right around here, right around the edge with some foam tape. So we're just going to cut little strips and corral our sequins, which will go here. You can also use foam dots if that's easier for you. And I'm thinking I might do a combination of both. Let's see how far I get with the foam dots. Now you don't want to leave any gaps in your foam tape, so whatever shape of tape you are using, make sure that you don't leave any gaps so that the sequins do not slide through so that they don't escape. And now I'm going to switch over to this foam tape and cut little strips. Now the width on these, um, sorry, the depth of the foam tape is the same for the foam dots and this little strip here, so there won't be like any kind of unevenness. Now before I remove the release paper on my foam tape, I want to make sure that I have my sequins on hand, which are here in a baggie, so some gold sequins, and also this piece of cardstock, which is a four and a half, half sorry, four and a half inch square that I can put on top to secure my sequins inside. So I have that all ready, so now I can remove my release paper. My release paper is off, so now I can sprinkle my sequins pretty generously right in the center of my aperture. That looks good. A generous seasoning of uh, sprinkles of a sparkle. <laughs> so now I can place my um, piece of cardstock here. This is again four and a half inches by four and a half inches. And that's going to secure all of our sequins. And there's also some beads in there, which I was surprised to buy. <laughs> I don't remember uh, those in there. So that was a nice surprise, just for some added texture. And then when we flip this over, we have a really fun shaker element. So now we can finish the rest of our card. So I've set aside my shaker card because I want to die cut a little bit more. I want to add this little uh, intricate element here at the center of my die set. 
So I'm going to pull this. I have this uh, piece of cardstock that I've trimmed, sorry, die cut previously with this same circle die there. And it's the same color as that cardstock. So it's all matchy, matchy, and fun. So what I'm going to do is grab this center die, which is really intricate and beautiful. And I'm going to place that there and run it through my die cutting machine. There is our intricate die. I'm just uh, removing the fallout, but look at this gorgeous fallout. You can also do paper piecing with this die if you like that. Or what you could also do is grab another uh, piece of cardstock. So something like that. It's not the right size, but you could trim this out and do a little backing for it and make a completely separate card. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is put some adhesive on the back of this and just place it right over our shaker element. Isn't that gorgeous? I love how you can still see the sequins through this gorgeous design. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. Now to save some time, I have die cut this beforehand, but using this same die set. So I use the outer circle die, the inner circle die, and then these cool little uh, panels here. They're like half circle panels. And you can make some really fun designs. You can die cut this, or you can cut it directly onto your um, your card front. It's up to you, really versatile die set. So I've cut this beforehand, and I'm just gonna glue that down. And then all I have left to do is to cut some of these uh, corners. So there are four designs to pick from, but I picked the leafy one because I felt it paired well with our uh, center there. Okay, I've glued that down, and now it's time to die cut my quarter pieces. So I have the same pink cardstock so that my card has a nice cohesive <laughs> look to it. So again, matchy matchy, and I'm gonna grab this corner, this corner joint, because I, again, I love the leafy design, but there are others to pick from. So there's my corner piece and then I have die cut some previously to save time and these are just going to go here and then all my card needs is a sentiment so let me glue these corners down gorgeous and then I can add my sentiment now for our sentiment I'm going to use one of these that's in the stamp set included in the kit so I'm going to grab this one birthday wishes and I'm just going to stamp on white cardstock so I'm not making it too fancy, something quick. And what I love about this card is that it really is quick. You can make this in 20 minutes. Everything just comes together. It's so easy to do a shaker card with this die set. So I'm gonna stamp this right at the top because I just wanna cut a strip once I'm done. So I'm placing my stamp at the tippity top corner there of my cardstock. So I'm gonna close that up. And for my ink, I'm going to be using Panama Rose, which is, uh, this is a Nouveau hybrid ink. And I love how small these uh, stamp inks are, this is stamp pad. They're so tiny and they're perfect for on the go. So there's my little sentiment. I've trimmed it into a strip. So now I want to map that onto my card, but I want to use some foam tape so that it has a little bit of a lift, a little bit of dimension. As I went to place my sentiment on the uh, shaker element here on the center of my card, I kind of have a second thought. So what I'm going to do is just put it here to the side so that you can see more of that gorgeous, intricate detail. I hope that you enjoyed this quick tutorial for how to make a shaker card. And don't forget to pick up Tonic Studios Card Making Collection Kit number eight. It's fabulous. And of course, it comes with the die set. It comes with papers stamps and an embossing folder and also an ideas magazine. I didn't use everything uh, that's included in the kit in my video, but it is a jam packed kit. So don't miss it. And also this die set is absolutely the coolest die set I've seen in a long time. And here are the papers along with some toppers that I did not use, but you can definitely use in your projects. So don't miss out on that. I'm Jeanette Lane and I will see you in a video real soon.